Hey there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. This is my second video on ChatGPT. Today I want to do something practical. How can you learn something new, in this case, learn the C programming language using ChatGPT? Well, if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So we're going to be spending most of this video over on the ChatGPT prompt. I'm going to show you how you can ask questions of ChatGPT so that you can learn the C programming language. However, do stick around to the end because there's a big caveat that I want to mention. OK, so here we are in ChatGPT. And I suppose the first thing is we could just ask it a general question. So let's go with teach me the C programming language and see what it says. So here it goes. And we'll just let that fulfill it out and then we'll talk about it. OK, so what's it done? It said, yes, it would be happy to teach me the C program. Now, tell me a bit about it. And it said, I'll need to do some things. I'll need a C compiler. And then it goes on to recommend some of those. It needs to say, I need to learn the basic syntax of C. And it starts to mention things like data types, variables, functions. It tells me I need to practice writing programs. It says I should learn about data structures and algorithms, including linked lists, stacks, and things like that. And it says I should join an online community to get some other stuff, Stack Overflow, GitHub, and so on. It says overall learning C can be challenging and so on. So that's great. It's given me kind of an introduction. It's told me some pretty logical things that I need to know, but I still haven't seen any C code. So let me ask it a, a simple question then. And now I like to use the idea of a blog post. So I'm going to say write a blog post because that seems to get it to give some good um, to good, give some good output. So write a blog post about a simple hello world program in C. So include a code comment and an explanation. So let's see uh, what it tells us about that. Sure. Here is a blog post about a simple hello world program in C. And so it's the classic introductory program, as it says, for starting a new programming language. You would also ask the same thing if you were trying to learn Python or Rust or Go. Here we go. Now we're actually seeing some C code. And it tells us a little bit about that C code, what each line does, what does hash include do there, what does uh, int main do. It's the starting point of the program. It talks about printf. It finally talks about the return statement. And it's even uh, and it located. It's even telling us how to compile it. If we were using, let's say, Linux, or we had Windows subsystem for Linux on there, even if we had a Mac, that would probably work. If we had the right tools installed, and it told us how to compile the program and how to run it. So there you go. You could now do your first thing in C. Of course, the problem is when you're learning something, you don't know what should you do next. What should be the next thing I should learn. So, I mean, if we scroll up to some of the things it said earlier on and see what it's already told us, it told us here that we should learn the syntax. It's important to understand keywords and operators who create your own names uh, include data types. So there we go, data types and variables. Let's start with variables. So why don't we say to it, uh, you know, what is a variable in the C programming language? include and exclude example code. OK, let's see what it says now. In the C program, a variable is a named memory location that stores a value. That's true. Variables are an essential part of a programming language and they are used to store data and manipulate it as necessary. Now it's going to give us a very simple program. You've got an integer, int, integer that is 10, a float, floating point number 3.14, a character C, which has just got the letter A in it, and then it uses printf to print those out. Now you can actually start to study that code and look at how it works. It'll be interesting to see what it says about the printfs, because if you notice here, it's got percent %d, percent %f, percent %c. They are some of the interesting things. And let's see what it says here. The printf function print out the variables. There you go, percent %d, percent %f, percent %c are placeholders used to format the output. So D is for integers, F for floats, C for character. So there you go, you're reaching getting an introduction now into how uh, C programming uh, works. Let's scroll back up and see what else it told us we need to learn about in this initial thing. We already looked at, uh, what was it, have some code variables, functions. OK, let's ask it about functions. That could be interesting. Write a blog post about functions in the C programming language. Include examples. OK, let's see what it says. 
functions are an essential part of a programming language, including in C, and that's true. Again, if we're learning Go or Python or Rust, functions are just about in every language. So a language, so creating a function in C, to create a function, you first need to declare it. So it's now going to go on and give us some information about that. So there we go. It's giving us a general generic uh, idea that isn't valid C in itself. But uh, let's see, it's telling us here what it all means. It's not this wrong about that C thing. It's just giving us a, a generic idea. And here it's giving us an, an actual function which adds two numbers together. So it's very easy for us to see the way that it works. Sum is equal to A plus B. You return the sum. That's very, very good. So there we're getting another idea about a function and how you use that. Now, of course, you could just keep going back over any words you don't understand, data type, function, linked list, and see what that can do. In fact, we'll look at linked lists uh, in a moment when we get onto the advanced topics. Uh, another way to do this is to look at existing tutorials uh, and see what subjects they cover, and then just look at uh, some of the keywords, like you might say, uh, well, tell me something uh, about loops, for example. Maybe you've seen in a, in a thing there is a, a loop. So why don't we uh, do that? So if we were wondering about what loops were, we could do exactly the same thing. Write a blog post about four loops in the C program. And I include examples, comments, and an explanation. So we've got that idea. It hasn't really mentioned loops before. Uh, so we've got that because we've looked at something else. Or maybe you know a bit of programming and you know that loops exist in Python, for example. You know that loops exist in JavaScript and you want to do it uh, in C. So it's going to tell you how to do it here. And it's given us the general syntax for a for loop, the initialization phase, the condition and the update phase. It's now going to explain them all. And then I'm guessing it's going to give us an actual example of a for loop uh, in a minute. So if you want to learn a new language, like you want to learn the C programming language, this is a great way of getting all of this information. Uh, and I say, it's better if you know a little bit of programming, if you don't know any programming, then any words you don't understand, you go back and say, tell me about whatever. And it will then go on and explain, as I said, floats, integers, linked lists, data structures, whatever it is you don't understand. And it will give you some. And if you want to go deeper again, you ask it another question about what it is that you've got. Here we go. We're coming up now to the actual uh, source code that will show us a bit about the... Um, the, uh, let's introduce the idea of an array, funny enough. already. We've now seen the idea of an array in here. And it's showing us a loop that goes through an array. So... You would need to study the example code it gives you and read the explanation line by line, and then you should be able to develop uh, the ideas that you that you need. As I said, we would mention linked lists. So linked lists are a particular uh, idea type of data structure. You find them in C and in many, many other programming languages. So let's ask it, write a blog post about linked lists in the C programming, include an example of a linked list of integers, include functions to add to the linked list, as well as remove from the linked list. So we're basically, we are, not just saying, tell me about linked lists. I already know that linked lists, you need to add things to them and you need to remove things from them. So it, I've kind of got a bit of an advantage there. Again, if you didn't have that information, you could just start with, tell me about linked lists. And then maybe from there, you could uh, dive into some of the text it tells you. Like here, it's telling you about the head of the linked list, the tail of the linked list. And maybe you could ask it some more questions until it starts to give you the answers that you're looking for. If you don't have any previous programming knowledge and here it's giving us a piece of C code and there you got the add node function as I was asking it to give you got the remove node function as I was asking it to give us and I assume then it's going to actually give that as an example actually run something add, add something to the linked list let's see what it does there you go add node one two three remove node two and then it also transverses iterates over the linked list printing out the numbers you got so you'll just get one and three so that's great so if you followed that you would uh, be good now maybe you'd ask it before that what is a write a blog post about pointers in C because maybe you're not familiar with those and so you need a bit of help with that so the point I'm trying to make is you can ask it questions and every time you get stuck on something ask it another question and get it to show you the C code that you're trying to learn for the thing that, you, that you've that you missed and keep on digging in and digging in and digging in until it gives you the answers that you want. Okay, so as you saw there, quite a lot of success in asking questions of ChatGPT, giving you source code, giving you keywords that you can ask further questions on so that you can start to learn the C programming language. However, 
as I mentioned at the beginning, a huge caveat. And that is that sometimes it will give you bad source code. It will give you wrong code that won't compile. Now, probably when you're asking simple questions about for loops and linked lists and, you know, uh, variables and floating point numbers and the printf statement and all that kind of stuff, it's going to work. I even had it one point in some of my testing. It could write code using uh, mutexes and, and it, it did that fine. However, sometimes it will generate bad code. So I asked it for an example of pointers to functions. And while it actually wrote good text about pointers to functions, while what it was saying was correct, and the source code it was created was 75% right, it was ultimately wrong and wouldn't compile. Now that's bad in one sense, because if you went to a class in high school or a lecturer at university, and then the lecturer gave you bad information and said, this is how you do this thing, and then it doesn't work, you would not be too well pleased. The same if you opened up a book or watched a video, and it said, this is how you do this thing, and then what they give you doesn't work. That's not a very good thing. So there is quite a negative to the fact that you're in a learning phase, you're, you want to learn this thing, and the information it's giving you is broken. A slight plus, and I really only mean slight, is that it does give you a chance to master the subject in that you could try to find out why it went wrong, or if you had the patience to ask the question again in a different way. So you could ask it, in my case, about pointers to functions, rephrase it in a different way, and because there is some randomness in the way it generates the results, it might generate a different result, and the second or maybe the third time the code would actually be correct. So it is something to watch out for. So what you really want to do is, as it said at the beginning there, get the example code, try every bit of code it gives you. And if you do hit a problem and you can't find a solution within ChatGPT by getting it to give you another answer, then go onto an online forum, join a community that can maybe help you understand that code. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos in my ChatGPT series, then hang around by subscribing to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.